lovelies and welcome back to Interpretation of Beauty. This channel is dedicated to providing knowledge and education of all aspects of skincare and beauty. So today I want to talk about the difference between an oily skin and an acne skin. Can you have acne without oil? Can you have oil without acne? The answer is yes to both. Anything that is going to clog pores, such as dry flaky skin, can cause acneic breakouts. Both are caused by overproduction of sebum. Oily skin appears as rougher. It's normally a lot thicker. It's a lot more durable. You notice an oil by a shiny appearance on the skin. A lot of people who have oily skin, especially females who wear makeup, they notice a shine. I always call it like the 11 o'clock shine as opposed to the five o'clock shadow. Put our makeup on it in the mornings and by 11 o'clock we're powdering again to get that shine off the face. We're also very known to think that the dewy look skincare is horrific because it just reminds us of being oily. <laughs> they tend to have clogged pores, so a lot of blackheads and melia. Oily skins are great, they age less. It can be a pain for finding a makeup that suits blackheads and enlarged pores on the skin. Just use products that sort of help control that shine on the skin. You can have acneic spots without having acne. When an oily skin turns bad is when your bacteria gets involved. The P. acneus bacteria and that's when you start to see the inflammation and that's when it gets painful, gets red. You will see the likes of your nodules. Nodules are soft, very painful lumps under the skin that are swollen. Cysts are the same but they actually contain pus because there's infection in there. They're normally larger, more inflamed and a lot more painful to touch. Even brushing off a cyst would be very painful. And then you've got your pustules and papules. I call them hidden spots. It's just when you've got that little lump under the skin. For an acne skin it's all about trying to control the sebum and levels of bacteria on the skin. Since the new sort of fringes came in, seen a lot of issues with extra breakouts, blackheads, papules, pustules on the forehead for younger men because it's adding extra oil. It's also adding extra bacteria. Couple of tips for an acneic skin. You wanna make sure you're cleansing the face and that you're not allowing any dead skin cells get trapped in. So anything we can do to prevent bacteria on our skin, not touch it as much. When you exercise, the sweat sits on the skin. If sweat stays on the skin, bacteria forms. If you are unable to shower directly after exercising, we always recommend having a cleanser or salicylic based pads that you can cleanse over the skin to make sure that bacteria isn't sitting on the skin. To treat an oilier skin we would normally recommend salicylic in maybe a wash form. Some people would find they need to use it every night. Some people would say they use it as a treatment once a week. Oilier skins love clay masks so kaolin, bentonite, things that's sulfur, charcoal, anything that's going to absorb that excess oil from the surface layer of the skin is brilliant. Something that's going to help control the oil. Your botanicals, blue green algae. We we look at maybe not adding any excess oil to the skin, using a silicone based moisturiser or a gel type moisturiser as well. And then someone with an oilier skin may want to go down the anti-aging retinol route. It isn't the most necessary product to control oil if it's just a shine you're dealing with, but retinol has so many other added benefits. When it goes on to acneic skin, you're definitely going to want to look at your salicylic acid. You 100% want to be trying to get to your retinol. You do have to build up retinol on the skin. You may want to be using a bit of a heavy your moisturizer because the skin could be dry but with all products when it comes to acne it can and probably will make it worse before it makes it better if there's a lot of underlying spots that haven't developed yet it's going to bring all those to the surface acne skins can like clay masks but normally they like a mask that has a bit of salicylic or glycolic in it too the clay mask itself isn't going to help with any of the inflammation it's just going to draw out the spot itself sometimes these products aren't enough to control an acne skin sometimes they have to go down the route of chemical peels. Chemical peels are done by qualified therapists or medical professionals and they are a lot of a higher concentration of products than what you'd be able to use at home yourself. Unfortunately sometimes it's just not 
not enough. People do need to go down the route of going to a doctor and getting a prescription of isoretinoin or uracutane. These are your highest level of retinols you can get. They do cause sensitivity to the skin. Sun exposure is not recommended at all, even when you're wearing SPF. It's constantly exfoliating the skin, so you shouldn't be exfoliating the skin while you're on these products. You want to be hydrating, keeping your lipid barrier in check while the vitamin A is working on it. The likes of retinol can't be used during pregnancy. So if you're suffering from acne during pregnancy, which is very common, you may want to look into the likes of the botanicals and your blue-green algae to help control the acne on the skin. That's all for me today. I hope you learned a little bit. Um, if you have any questions or you want me to talk about any topics, please leave them in the comment section below. Please like this video. Yeah, please like this video, subscribe to this channel and please share with just one person. It will really make a difference and I really appreciate it. That's all from me today and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Today I want to talk about... Hmm, really squeaky chair today. La la la.